This is our next example on Coulomb's Law. Some of you might find it interesting to know that this was a past midterm question for EECE 261, so it makes great practice for exams. Um, also, it's a direct application of the infinite line of charge that we had studied earlier. Before we move on and actually solve this question, I'd like for you to actually read it and uh, copy it down for yourself so you have a reference as we move along through the rest of the question. As the question suggests, for part A, we need to sketch the electric field. Before we do that, let's draw it out. That is, draw out what this half line looks like, and we'll analyze that. That'll make it much easier to actually sketch what the electric field looks like. Here's the half line drawn to the specifications of the question, going from 0 on the z-axis all the way to negative infinity. Um, of course, I have my rho L over here, which is the charge density. Let's analyze the system now. And we can better see what this electric field may look like. Just like we did for the infinite line of charge, we'll use cylindrical coordinates. It makes things a lot easier because it's symmetric with the half line. Here we have our a hat row direction, go out in all directions, and phi all around, and of course a hat z in the z direction. Here's our half line superimposed on this coordinate system so we can actually see the symmetry. Um, just like we did for the infinite line of charge, we'll vary one of the components in the coordinate system and keep the other two constants so we can see what this electric field distribution may uh, look like. So in this case, we're going to vary phi and keep rho and z constant. Because this half line is symmetric with the coordinate system, if we move all the way around it at different points, the electric field at any of these points with a constant rho and constant z around this infinite, sorry, this half line of charge will be the same. So changing phi will not change the electric field. If we vary z and keep rho and phi constant, the electric field will be different because this is no longer like our infinite line of charge. What we have over here is line of charge that goes all the way to negative infinity this way but over here it stops at this z equals zero point so unlike the infinite line of charge we had cancellation of the z components all throughout the line over here that will only be true as you're really far away from this end point or the top of the line where uh, there is no more charge on the on the other end. So the further you are away, you'll have this Z component cancellation so that you only have these rho components coming out for the electric field. But as you move closer towards the top of the line, you'll have something that looks a lot like a point charge. And the reason being is that there is no rest of the line over here like you had for the infinite line to cancel out those components. So varying z does in fact change the electric field. And this was the simple case that uh, we had studied for the infinite line of charge, varying rho and keeping phi and z constant. Well, that will definitely change the electric field. And that one's a little easier to see intuitively because the further you are away from it, the weaker the electric field. And that is fairly intuitive to understand. Therefore, we have this uh, distribution of the electric field. So that solves part A. As I've discussed earlier, because there is no cancellation of the z components at the top of the line, you'll have something that looks a bit like a point charge. And at the bottom of the line over here, the further you are towards the uh, negative infinity zone, you have this electric field that goes out in the a hat rho directions. Let's move along now to part B.